Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. So conventional TENS and IFC use something called a gate control mechanism. The gate theory, some of it, is illustrated over here on the left side of the screen. This is a pretty simplistic diagram, but remember that this really is just the spinal thalamic tract, which is a pathway that we talked about in previous videos that conveys pain information, among other things, to the brain. There's just a few other details that we left out on this picture over here, like these inhibitory inner neurons, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. So remember, pain does not occur in the periphery or the extremities. Pain is a perception by the brain and the brain only. So first over here, look at this neuron right here. This is a unipolar neuron, which is a sensory neuron. This is our first order neuron. So here are the receptors out in the periphery. So if you cut your arm, then it would be these receptors that pick up that information and send it through this first order neuron up to the brain. So here are the actual receptors of that first order neuron or nociceptors. Here's the cell body of the first order neuron. And then in red here, this is the major axon of that first order neuron. Notice that this axon, the end of it's gonna synapse with the cell body of the second order neuron here also in red. The second order neuron is then gonna carry information up to the thalamus where it synapses with a third order neuron and that takes information to other parts of the brain and then pain is perceived. Now, how does this first order neuron send information through to the second order neuron? Well, the first order neuron activates or stimulates the second order neuron. And that's why we have this plus sign right here. The first order neuron activates the second order neuron. But you'll also notice down here that so there's a branch coming off of this axon right here of the first order neuron. Now this axon is going to synapse with another neuron right here. This one is an inhibitory interneuron. Now the inhibitory interneuron, if it was activated, it can actually function to inhibit the second order neuron. Okay, that's why we have this negative sign here. However, the function of this branch right here in black is actually to inhibit the inhibitory interneuron. That's why we see the negative sign right here. So if we inhibit an inhibitory interneuron, then the inhibitory interneuron is turned off and it can no longer inhibit the second order neuron. So this second order neuron is activated really through two mechanisms, direct stimulation or activation by this major axon right here in red, but also through inhibition of the inhibitory inner neuron. It's like two negatives make a positive. So the second order neuron is by default activated. So whether or not this second order neuron is activated is kind of like a gate. So what does a gate do? Well, if the gate's open, it allows things through. If a gate is closed, it does not allow things through. And so as long as this second order neuron is activated, nociceptive information is gonna be conveyed to the brain and the brain will perceive pain. And so because the second order neuron is activated, it will continue to convey that information to the brain and the brain perceives pain. So the gate here is open. Now, this unipolar first order sensory neuron right here is going to be of one of two types. It's either gonna to belong to an A-delta nerve or a C nerve. Now, why is that important? Because it turns out we can actually activate another nerve fiber type that will actually activate this inhibitory interneuron. As of right now, the inhibitory interneuron is turned off. We need to have a way to turn this on and that will close this gate. And so to do that, we're gonna stimulate nerve fibers that are actually of A beta type. So if we look here, here's our unipolar first order sensory neuron, but the receptors right here are not nociceptors, they're actually mechanoreceptors. And so this system is actually gonna convey a mechanoreception type of information to the brain. But if we look at this major axon right here, it has branches that come off. Look at this, this one in light green. It turns out that when we stimulate an A beta fiber, it's actually going to also stimulate this branch right here, and this branch will actually function to activate this inhibitory interneuron. So yes, this green branch right here is competing with this black branch right here, okay? But if the stimulation through this A beta fiber right here is greater than the inhibition by this fiber, 
then we'll have net activation of this inhibitory interneuron. And what happens if this inhibitory interneuron is activated? Then it will actually decrease the perception of pain because you're actually going to function to inhibit that second order neuron. Why is this inhibited? or less activated, because now we're stimulating, we're having net activation of this inhibitory interneuron. And now there's less activity of this second order neuron, and so we have effectively now closed that gate. And if there's less transmission of information to the brain through the second order neuron right here, then the brain is going to perceive less pain. Acupuncture tends in IFC use what's called the endogenous opioid mechanism. So opioids are chemicals that actually function to reduce pain. You've probably heard of the opioid crisis. Things like morphine, hydrocodone, those are opioids, but generally those are going to be exogenous, meaning they come from the outside. The opioids that we're talking about here are endogenous, meaning they're made by our own neurons and they help to reduce pain. But we have to have a way to stimulate the release of those endogenous opioids. So to understand that, let's take a look at this picture over here. This is the spinal thalamic pathway, which remember is a pathway uh, that conveys pain type of information from the periphery up to the brain. But always remember that pain does not occur in the extremities or the periphery. There's only stimuli out here. Pain is actually perceived in the brain. All right, so right here we have our first order neuron. It's coming into the dorsal root ganglion. Here's the cell body of that first order neuron. And then it's gonna synapse here in the spinal cord with a second order neuron. Here's our second order neuron that then goes to the opposite side of the spinal cord and then it goes up the spinal cord, up the brainstem to the thalamus. And then of course there's a third order neuron that carries that information to specific parts of the brain and you perceive pain. So to simplify that, let's take a look over here. In red here, this is our first order neuron. Okay? It's a sensory neuron and it's unipolar type. Right? So the receptor out here in the periphery, this is our nociceptor. It detects pain type of information. And then here's your axon leading to the cell body, which is contained in that dorsal root ganglion. Right? And then here's the axon that goes into the spinal cord and you can see it synapses with the cell body of the second order neuron right here. Okay? Now, how does the first order neuron convey information to that second order neuron? Well, the first order neuron activates or stimulates the second order neuron. That's why we see the plus sign here. So similar to the gate theory, how would we decrease the perception of pain? Well, we need to have a way to kind of shut off or at least inhibit to some extent this second order neuron. And that's exactly what we're going to see. So as this nociceptive information is flowing up to the brain and the brain perceives pain, there's actually two regions of the brain stem over here that become activated. One's in the midbrain, one's in the medulla. I'll actually include that over here as well. In the midbrain, we actually have what's called the paraaqueductal gray matter or the PAG. In the medulla, we have the nucleus raphae magnus or NRM. Okay? So when the brain starts perceiving that pain, these two regions of the brainstem become activated. Okay? So why is this important? Because when the paraaqueductal gray matter and nucleus raphae magnus become activated, they activate these tracts right here. And these are descending tracts that actually function to inhibit pain. How do they inhibit pain? Well, it turns out that there's an inhibitory neuron right here in black. So how does the inhibitory neuron become activated? Well, these descending tracts from the PAG and the NRM activate this inhibitory inner neuron. It turns out they do so by releasing serotonin. Serotonin binds to receptors on the cell body and the dendrites here, and that actually activates the inhibitory inner neuron. And so when that inhibitory inner neuron is activated, it then inhibits this second order neuron. And so you can see that the first order neuron right here, which is stimulatory or activating, is competing with this inhibitory interneuron. And so the more activity you have with this inhibitory interneuron, the less activity of that second order neuron that you're actually going to have. Now, how exactly does the inhibitory interneuron inhibit the second order neuron? Well, it does so through the release of endogenous opioids. So as soon as these descending tracts uh, through serotonin activate the inhibitory interneuron, then the inhibitory interneuron inhibits the second order neuron by release of beta endorphin, uh, met and lu encephalins, and dynorphins. And these are three kinds of opioids 
that can inhibit this second order neuron. And if there's less activity of the second order neuron, then there's gonna be less activity of the third order neuron and less perception of pain because perception of pain occurs in the brain and the brain only. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.